In my last video, I showed my technique for making wood textured cardstock. In this video, let's take a look at one of the crafts I made with that technique. A wooden cart, perfect for any medieval, fantasy, historical setting. Adding little bits of life, details, obstacles, and at times much needed cover for any of your games, tabletops, and even dioramas. Hello there my friends. Do you need something to haul your cabbages or turnips? If so, then this is the video for you. Drawing on inspiration from several sources, a cart like this is the perfect thing to add a genuine, lived-in feel to your games. We'll start by finding something circular, about the size that you want your wheels to be. I used a 25mm base, so they're about an inch big. We'll draw two circles onto some double-sided wood textured cardstock that we made in the last video, and then we'll cut the circles out. Going in roughly the same direction as the wood grain, we'll cut each circle in half, and then cut those halves in half again to give us four pieces for each wheel. However big the diameter for your wheels was, we're going to cut out four thin strips of the same cardstock, also going in the same wood grain direction. Mine were a bit less than an inch. If yours curved like mine did, just uncurve them. Bend it a little bit the other way. It's just cardstock. Like with many of my projects, I'm using my favorite Eileen's Tacky Glue on this because it gives you some drying time to make sure things set up just right. Using the offcuts from one of the circles, we're going to make two tiny little circles to go in the middle of each wheel. My cart right knowledge is sketchy at best, so forgive me for not knowing the names of any of these pieces. <coughs> To begin assembling them, we'll just glue the pieces of our wheel circles together, one by one. Then we'll glue our tiny circles right in the middle. and then glue our little boards on either side of the little circle so that they're going perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to our wheel sections. Then just do that all again and you've got your wheels for the cart. When making something like this, I like to have a miniature close by to help get the scale right, figure out how big you should make things. I went with about one and a half inches for the main body platform of the cart. And then, using my little warrior lady again, I decided on one and three quarter inches for how long it should be, because I'd like someone to be able to ride in the back of the cart too. After I cut out the platform, I cut it into halves and then each of those into three pieces to give a total of about six boards. Then I sort of shuffled them up to give it more of a, a ramshackle look. And then, because we're not going to have them all right next to each other, we're going to put a little space to show some cracks. I took away one of them. After cutting some longer boards to go across, we'll also cut two thin longer ones and glue them together to use as our axle to connect the wheels to the cart. Then one by one, we'll glue the pieces, the boards that we made for the platform to the cross beams to sort of make the whole, the floor of the cart, the platform of it. We'll trim off the cross beams to be flush, and then we'll make some handles so that the cart could be pulled by hand or hitched to an animal. Just like with the axle, we'll cut some thin pieces and glue them together to give them a little bit of width. Mm -hmm. 
and while those dry, we'll test fit the axle to see about where would be a good spot for it, and then glue it into place. When you trim off the ends of the axle, leave a little bit sticking out because we don't want the wheels to be basically like they're glued to the walls of the cart. We want to have a little space between the wheels and the walls. And then we'll just glue the wheels on. Not sure quite how to phrase it, but I tried to glue my wheels so that they'd be aligned the same way, like they're at the same point in their rotation. While the wheels dry, we'll finish the handles by trimming down one of the ends so that they'd be easier to grab and hoist by hand. And then we'll just glue them in too. Be sure to leave enough space so that a miniature could be in between the handles as if they were pulling the cart. To support the wheels more, I'm going to put another board on top of the axle and glue it to both the wheels as well to sort of reinforce the whole thing. Give them more connection points, bits they can hold on to make a stronger build overall. Because like most of my things, this isn't for display really. Like I plan to play with it. It'll be handled, moved around a little bit. You can see it's really taking shape. And honestly, you could stop here if that's all you wanted. I think I want to put like some guardrails around it so that all the cabbages or turnips and such won't fall out. So basically I'm just making some tiny fences that will fit to the length and then the width of the cart. So getting some little posts and then some boards. Gluing them all together. Trimming them down to fit. And then making a little box out of them. I wasn't sure at first if I just wanted it to have three sides or to be enclosed on all four sides. But eventually I decided on all four. After letting that dry, We'll put some glue on each of the posts and set it onto the cart platform. You can clean off any excess glue with a piece of cardboard. With the build finished, there really isn't any more details to add. So we're just going to prime and seal it. We're going to use a black paint and Mod Podge mixture to coat the whole thing. In addition to a good dark base coat, this will also strengthen it even more. Then, we'll give everything a dry brush of an off-white. This will make our painting steps super easy. And honestly, if you wanted a gritty black and white feel to your games, you could just stop here. It's snowing in the forest where I live today. Perfect weather for staying inside and doing some crafting and painting. Thanks to the black base coat and the off-white dry brush, this is a very easy craft to paint. We'll start with some brown, and give the entire cart a thin coat.
Then we'll mix our brown and our off-white to make a tan to add a little color variation to some of the wood. So I'm doing the axles, the wheels, the handles, and a couple random boards. Finally, we're going to give a light off-white dry brush to the entire piece. This will tie everything together and give it a little bit more of a weathered look. Much like my life, my games frequently take place in ruins, and so I like things to look a little bit less than cared for. And that's it. A very easy to build craft that can add a lot of life and detail to your games. Aside from the fantastic agricultural applications, a model cart can be perfect for historical scenes, dioramas, transporting VIPs, or as the final missing part for those bring out your dead jokes. Maybe you're being hunted by a group of witch hunters and need an overturned cart to hide from their crossbow bolts. Whatever the case may be, whether it's hauling turnips or adding life to your cities and villages, a miniature cart is an amazing craft and I hope one that you find very satisfying. I'm really proud of this craft because of how easy it is, how great it looks, and how accessible it is. This is something anyone, anywhere can make. Thank you for watching my friends. Take care, till next time.